dear learner welcome to this episode on civil aviation in india part 1 as you know air transport plays a significant role in the world economy today now air transport in india supports 56.6 million jobs and produces over 2.2 trillion us dollar of the global gross domestic product air passenger traffic is also increasing at a healthy rate the aviation industry's potential in india is massive the market already caters to about 150 million passengers passing through its many airports with the potential to grow further by 2020 traffic at airports in india is anticipated to reach 450 millions the aviation industry presently supports about 0.5% of india's gdp this topic on air travel introduces you to the dynamics of air travel management in this episode we are going to learn about history of aviation in india ministry of civil aviation in india directorate general of civil aviation airports authority of india and bureau of civil aviation security and airport economic regulatory authority first is history of aviation in india on 15th october 1932 tata sons operated a schedule from karachi to colombo via bombay and madras the flight carried no passengers but operated with only postal mail bags in the year 1933 another air service named indian national airways came into operation and it operated the same sector that is from karachi to colombo via bombay and madras and both the companies earned entire revenue from the transportation of mails during the second world war the government was in need of more number of aircrafts and took all men and materials for war purpose to the war front areas by aircrafts thus all aircrafts had come under the control of government after the second world war all these aircrafts were idle in order to utilize the idle resources the government of india invited private parties to start air services that gave a big boost to civil aviation sector as a safe efficient and comfortable means of transport large number of airlines emerged in late 1940s to operate flights in order to regulate competition in india aircraft act was amended to make it obligatory to license air transport undertaking and prohibiting the operation without license this act came into force on 1st october 1946 with these conditions prevailing in india this unutilized aircrafts were taken over by the parties and many airlines started operating throughout our country few of the airlines are kalinga airways deccan airways himalayan airways air india indian national airways bharat airways and so on almost all these airlines were not making profit and the precious fuel was drained on 15th august 1947 india got independence we became our own rulers we had our own civil aviation department like all other ministries and departments civil aviation ministry of government of india went into the details of performance of all these private carriers and found out that all of them were making losses and the precious fuel purchased against the foreign currency was not utilized properly making an impact on our exchequer this made the government to lose precious foreign exchange hence it was decided to amalgamate all the airlines together and this was done by an act of the parliament the government enacted the air corporation act 1953 on 1st august 1953 and formulated 
Air India International and Indian Airlines Corporation. Air India was designed to operate international flights and Indian Airline Corporation was to operate domestic as well as flights to neighboring countries like Sri Lanka, Nepal, Burma, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Maldives, etc. Both carriers operated with relatively old aircraft and insufficient work practices from airports which were functional at best. There was no focus on developing traffic and the market grew at uninspiring single digit rates. In 1986, private airlines were allowed to operate charter and non-scheduled services under the air taxi scheme which meant inter alia that they could not publish time schedules or issue tickets to passengers. This was introduced to boost tourism, augment domestic air services and boosted the much needed competition in the existing monopoly market. A host of private players commenced operations as taxi operators including Air Sahara, Damania Airways, East West Airlines, Jet Airways, Modilift and NEPC Airlines. With effect from 1st March 1994, the Air Corporation Act was repealed and the air transport sector in India was open to private players subject to fulfillment of statutory requirements for operation of scheduled services. While six operators were granted license, only Jet and Air Sahara were able to start their services. In 1997, steps were taken to further remove the barriers to entry and exit from the sector. There was now only a pre-entry scrutiny of applications to verify the financial soundness, maintenance, security and safety aspects of operations and human resource development proposed to be undertaken by the applicant. The choice of the aircraft type and size was also left to the operator. By 1997, only four operators that started operations following the deregulations continued to operate namely Jet Airways, Air Sahara, Jackson and Modilift. Thus, during the period 1993 to 1995, the first step in domestic aviation deregulation were taken allowing private airline entry. However, the government was still focused on protecting the state-owned carriers. Only Jet Airways and Air Sahara survived behind the initial couple of years. After the failure of the deregulation experiment, the industry fell into dormancy during 1995 to 2003. No new carriers entered the market and Air India and Indian Airlines continued to be starved of capital. Aviation was largely untouched by the economic reform agenda of the governments in power as there was little strategic directions for the sector. Period between 2003 and 2006 was a period of unprecedented change. The Ministry of Civil Aviation recognized the importance of aviation for the development of business, trade and tourism. And it had a vision for delivering a vibrant and modern sector. The industry saw dramatic reforms across the aviation value chain. The year 2003 to 2004 is a watershed year in the history of civil aviation in India. It marked by the entry of low-cost carriers that is LCC. In August 2003, India witnessed the advent of its first low-cost carrier which had no frills, they are air decon, to enter the domestic aviation industry bringing in competition to the existing highly concentrated airline industry with players like Indian Airlines, Air Sahara and Jet Airways. This changed the competitive landscape of the industry. Since then, many other low-cost carriers LCCs, have entered the market. In 2005 and 6, Kingfisher, a fully service carrier and three LCCs namely GoAir, Paramount and SpiceJet began their operations. 
Another LCC, Indigo Airlines, entered the market in 2006 and 2007. The entry of LCC or no frill model into the airline market changed the landscape of competition in the market significantly and air travel became gradually more affordable resulting in rapid growth in passenger traffic. This model brought with it newer pricing strategies such as advanced purchase fare that resulted in discounted fares, promotional offers and introduction of flights to newer destinations. The coexistence of full service carriers FSCs and low cost carriers LCCs has also given the consumer a wide choice of service in the market. However, this period also witnessed major corporate restructuring with three significant mergers taking place in 2007 and 8 between Air India and Indian Airlines, Kingfisher and Air Deccan and Jet Airways and Air Sahara. The growing of LCC market share in the period 2007 and 2011 eventually forced the FCCs to take note of the changing dynamics of the Indian domestic airline industry. The FSC subsequently introduced their own low cost model in 2011 and 12. It has been observed that the combined market share of all the LCCs including the low cost arm of the FSC is approximately 70 percent. Development during this period included domestic open sky policies which saw market entry by several carriers and the arrival of low cost airline model in India with the launch of Air Deccan and subsequently Spicejet, Indigo, Go Air etc. Announcement of the airport modernization plans, placement of orders for 111 new aircraft for Air India and Indian Airlines, liberalization of international sector with some private carriers permitted to operate overseas, greater access for foreign carriers and opening up of international routes for non-metro airports, increased foreign direct investment caps in certain sectors of the industry traffic started to accelerate at double digit rates both domestic and international levels never before seen in India highlighting a latent demand for travel. Next is regulatory authorities for aviation in India. The Ministry of Civil Aviation in India is responsible for regulation of civil aviation in India. Ministry of Civil Aviation in India. It is a nodal ministry responsible for the formulation of national policies and programs for development and regulation of civil aviation and for devising and implementing schemes for the orderly growth and expansion of civil air transport. Its functions also extends to overseeing airport facilities, air traffic services and carriage of passengers and goods by air. The ministry also administers implementation of the Aircraft Act 1934. Next composition of the ministry. The ministry is under the charge of a minister of state for civil aviation. The secretary is the head of the ministry and is assisted by one additional secretary and financial advisor. Three joint secretaries, seven officers of the level of director or deputy secretary or financial controller and ten officers of the level of under secretary. It is located at Rajiv Gandhi Bhavan, Safdarjung Airport, New Delhi. Next structure. The ministry has the following organizations under its purview. They are autonomous or attached organizations. They include Directorate General of Civil Aviation, Bureau of Civil Aviation Security, Commission of Railway Safety and they also includes air carriers like Air India, Indian Airlines, 
Pavan Hans Helicopters Limited and they include airports, they are airports authority of India, airports economic regulatory authorities. Third is Directorate General of Civil Aviation that is DGCA. The Directorate General of Civil Aviation is a regulatory body in the field of civil aviation primarily dealing with the safety issues. It is responsible for regulation of air transport services to, from or within India and for enforcement of civil air regulations, air safety and air worthiness standards. The DGCA also coordinates all regulatory functions with the International Civil Aviation Organization ICAO. The functions of DGCA are construction, maintenance and management of domestic civil airports, provision of aircraft firefighting services, security and anti hijacking measures. Second function is provision of aeronautical communication, radar and navigation facilities at all civil airports including international airports in accordance with the requirements specified by ICAO. Third function is the enforcement of air transport regulations, safety requirements, formulation of standards of airworthiness for civil aircraft registered in India, certification of airworthiness of aircrafts, licensing of pilots or navigators and other crew members and the regulation rules of air traffic. Fourth function is to investigate the aircraft incidents and accidents. Fifth is the evaluation of performance and economies of aircraft, design and development of aircraft. Sixth is supervision of the activities of flying and gliding clubs. Seventh is training of department personnel in air traffic control and communication operations and maintenance of radio and radar navigational devices and telecommunication facilities. Eighth is formulation, administration and implementation of air transport rules and regulations. Ninth is implementation of bilateral air service agreements between India and other countries and license with International Civil Aviation Organization. Tenth function is the registration of civil aircraft in India. Fourth objective is Airports Authority of India AAI. It is an organization working under the Ministry of Civil Aviation that manages all the airports in India. The Airport Authorities of India was formed on 1st April 1995 by merging the International Airports Authority of India and National Airports Authority. It is responsible for providing safe, efficient air traffic in the Indian airspace. It controls and manages the entire Indian airspace extending even behind the territorial limits of the country as accepted by the International Civil Aviation Organization that is ICAO. The AAI manages and operates 126 airports including 11 international airports, 89 domestic airports and 26 civil enclaves. The corporate headquarters are at Rajiv Gandhi Bhavan, Safdar Jung Airport, New Delhi. Functions the first function is to control and management of the Indian airspace extending beyond the territorial limits of the country as accepted by ICAO. Second is to design and the development operation and maintenance of international and domestic airports and civil enclaves. Third, construction, modification and management of passenger terminals. Fourth, development management of cargo terminals at domestic and international airports. Fifth is provision of passengers facilities 
and information system at the passenger terminals at airports. Sixth function, expansion and strengthening of operation area wise runways, aprons, taxiways, etc. Seventh function, provision of visual aids. Eighth is the provision of communication and navigational aids. Next is the revenue. Most of AAI revenue is generated from landing or parking fees and fees collected by providing air traffic control services to aircraft over the Indian airspace. Only 16 of the 126 airfields operated by AAI are profitable while the other airports incur heavy losses due to underutilized and poor management. Privatization of airports. The AAI was involved in a tussle with the Ministry of Civil Aviation over the issue of privatization of its two most profitable airports. One is the Delhi airport and the other one is the Mumbai airport. The government of India handed over these airports to private companies for the purpose of modernization in 2006. The privatization for Mumbai has been handed over to GVK group and for Delhi to the GMR group. The airports which have been privatized are Hyderabad International Airport, Bengaluru International Airport, Delhi International Airport, Mumbai International Airport and Cochin International Airport. Next is the international projects. The AAI has been involved in various consultancy projects with Libya, Algeria, Yemen, Maldives, Nauru and Afghanistan. The AAI also provides trained personnel for operation, maintenance and management of airports in these countries. The authority comprises of a national airport division and an international airport division. Air traffic control services, communication services and radio navigational aids are provided by the national airport division at all the airports. It has a civil aviation training college at Allahabad which imparts training to various operational cadre like communication, ATC or radar controllers. It also has a fire service training school at Narayanpur near Calcutta for imparting training and conducting refresher courses in firefighting and rescue services. Fifth object is the Bureau of Civil Aviation Security. Bureau of Civil Aviation Security is a nodal body on all civil aviation security matters. It is responsible for the formulation of national civil aviation security program and its application. It sets the guidelines or standard of the security measures and monitors their enforcement at the airports through periodical or surprise inspections and conduct of dummy checks. It also imparts training in aviation security on a regular basis. It has four regional offices at Mumbai, Delhi, Calcutta and Chennai which have a bomb detection and disposal squad. Laying down aviation security standards in accordance with Annex 17 to Chicago Convention of ICAO for airport operators, airline operators and their security agencies are responsible for implementing AVSEC measures. Monitoring the implementation of security rules and regulations and carrying out survey of security needs. Ensure that the persons implementing security controls are appropriately trained and possess all competences required to perform their duties. Planning and coordination of aviation security matters. Surprise or dummy checks to test professional efficiency and alertness of security staff. Mock exercise to test efficacy of contingency plans and operational preparedness of the various agencies. Next is Airports Economic Regulatory Authority. The Airport Economic Regulatory Authority AERA is a statutory body 
constituted under the Airports Economic Regulatory Authority of India Act 2008. Its head office is at Delhi. The statutory functions of AERA are as below. It determines the tariff for the aeronautical services. It determines the amount of the development fees in respect to major airports. It determines the amount of passenger service fee levied under Rule 88 of the Aircraft Rules 1937 made under the Aircraft Act 1934. It monitors the set of performance standards relating to quality, continuity and reliability of service as may be specified by the central government or any authority authorized by it in this behalf. It helps in recalling such information that may be necessary to determine the tariff under clause. It performs other functions relating to tariff as may be entrusted to it by the central government or as may be necessary to carry out the provisions of this act. Conclusion Aviation in India has a long history. Civil aviation sector has been a catalyst for the economic development of the country. However, this sector has not received the due weight age over many years and is mainly considered as an elite group segment. The Ministry of Civil Aviation India is responsible for the regulation of civil aviation activities in India. The Indian government has recognized the importance of civil aviation sector due to its rapid growth. It has also been estimated that 95% of international arrivals in India are by air. This emphasizes the fact that the aviation sector has a bright future in the country's growth and development in the coming years. Thank you. Thank you.